Hi, so I have mostly finished works on this machine. It's, uh, well, apart from this ugly bit, and I have to change a little bit more about that, but more about it later. And also I have to make uh, slots for Mitre Guide, I guess it's called. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I haven't finished really, but I can show you a few things that I would probably change in the future and stuff like that. So from last time I showed you the lift mechanism, which is pretty much used as it was here. I have this handle for lifting blade. It's It works fine. And this uh, whole thing tilts on, the, on some hinges, which works pretty well actually, and allows me to access the stuff. What I did change was I moved this arbor on top of this uh, of this board, which is used to adjust height. So this gives me much higher height of the blade that I can use, practically, because otherwise it would be covered along like like so, which is not great. And for that I basically made cut out, as you can see, I already made a contact. Another thing that has changed is this thing, because I had to transfer this uh, this handle a little bit more up, because otherwise it would be somewhere around here, which is almost at the ground, which is not ideal, obviously. Not only because it's hugely inconvenient, but also because this thing has to tilt along with the whole thing, basically, and if it was here, it would have to. I would have to cut like something like this circle, so or this arc. So that's not very great. So what I did was basically I got some piece of wood, made a circle. This is CD basically cut. Then and this is some plastic rope, which works fairly well. I mean, it's not perfect, as you can see. It's a not perfect power transmission. I would obviously use ideally some o-ring which would transfer power more more better, more evenly, I would say. This thing can be a little bit hard to rotate, especially when the angle of on this bearing changes. You can maybe hear it sometimes cracking. Which would be probably ideal if I would disassemble this and make some clearance with some sandpaper, I guess. I don't think it does make any sense to lubricate anything here, as you can see. It will be covered in dust. And mainly this rod. And I want to cover this with some hose like this, because it could be compressed. Not a lot, but it can be compressed, so if uh, this nut basically as it slides forwards and backwards it won't be covered in dust and it won't cause any more friction that is unnecessary. Also because this is on the top now the nut can be accessed as you can see. Well I would have to raise it up a little bit but I no longer need this cutout. And also I get easy access to these screws which allows me to adjust like the tilt of this plate maybe even maybe even this way, but last time I adjusted it was on these bearings which may not be ideal, probably shimming it under here may be much better solution. So yeah, that's the lifting mechanism again and okay, so now main thing I want to talk about here is the tilting mechanism which... So I use this plastic material which is Dolorin or polyoxymethylene it is very self-lubricating plastic basically now to fabricate this, I basically... well, let me do this. I basically had to make two templates, one like this and other I did cut out, but like that, basically. Without this piece, this is for something completely different. Basically send it to fit and I use this to route the this board of plastic basically so it I have two matching pieces basically on each side. 
Now this wasn't fun at all, the chips from the plastic were absolutely everywhere and they stick to everything because of static electricity so it was a little bit premature Christmas I would say I guess. So here you can see how this works a little bit better. So this is the half circle on uh, these things that tilts. It's a little bit at an angle if you can see it and that's because when you tilt it I want basically the center of gravity which is somewhere about yeah somewhere right right here be basically because of motor I want it to be supported so that works pretty well actually the alignment was surprisingly easy I basically marked a line here and a line there which basically goes over here so I can show you well, let me maybe show you on the other side. I'll, I'll, I'll wait a second. Well, I can't really demonstrate this very well on the saw itself, so let's imagine that you are looking at the side of the saw and I guess this point is like the center of rotation that you want it to be. So basically, I have I had to align this thing. I basically used a... I basically aligned this with the with the saw itself like the frame and this point is basically center of this arc so I basically use something to project this point down onto a point on the saw itself or on its frame then align this thing with this arc which is clamped now to the saw and then you can basically see that it rotates around the same point so this means that the saw blade rotates around this very edge on this on this slit okay let me try this again I will use a line key to align it with the blade so you can see point of contact basically it has to sit quite flat so now I am tilting the blade to the original position. And back again to see if there will be any significant gap, which there shouldn't be. Man, how this thing works. Yeah, close enough, I guess. Anyway, well, I tried. Now I have added some uh, stoppers, so this blade should be perfectly aligned or perfectly perpendicular. Now, perpendicular. Yeah, that's pretty good actually. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about this tilting mechanism. It is very, very complicated actually. So because the motor is very heavy and it is not in the center of gravity which is above this box itself so I cannot place it there it is uh, quite problematic to move this thing by hand especially to the to the 45 degree position where the motor will exert a lot of force onto me basically so it's not that I am weak, I mean I am, but still it's not ideal to basically manipulate it by, let me say it this way, I am using this thing to basically lock the position, as you can see here is just not, so this will tighten this white piece to the wood itself. So now it's unlocked and I can't really move it very easily and also it is moving it just from one side if I move it here basically this whole thing dislodges from this from the seat it is sitting in basically so what I have done is basically I have I have added down here a mechanism that is placed in the center of this box and by moving 
by moving this piece forward and backwards this whole thing can rotate and so I had to make something that will allow me to move it forward and backwards, right? I am driving it by this threaded rod which is going into this hole and it goes into here where the chain sprocket is and a chain and I'm using this piece to basically retain it in correct position and add some tension on the chain itself ok so now I covered this thing, there is a bearing I had to remake this covering because it's a ugly as hell and not as planned but anyway so now finally the chain goes here and there's another sprocket and handle so now I can basically move the handle like so and the whole thing will rotate because this thing is moved by the conveyor quote unquote and yeah the whole thing will rotate quite a lot of power gets lost in this transmission system but still this gives me quite quite great deal of accuracy when when basically setting up the angle but I can move this fuck have once again fucking loosened the nut on the on this sprocket so that's what I did not finish last time and that's what I have to like make better I guess now one thing about this conveyor thingy is that it needs to pivot and I'm supporting it with this elastic rope and another thing that it does when I lift it up because I can lift it up it does lift the whole this thing so it is acting not only as a means to tilt this thing but also as a spring to lift it up a little bit and basically alleviate a friction on these bearings a little bit at least it really helps I have made my own bearings with this uh, white plastic material and maybe you can see it better here there is basically a bearing block with hole of this size I mainly use this plastic because as you can see I have this plastic already here and I had to drill through it so I made quite precise hole basically to fit this aluminum extrusion same thing on the other side and uh, voila I have bearing and it works quite well for low rotational speed this is very good bearing material also here you can see that I don't have very much space so I had to make my own bearing from this white material basically I, I'm using 10 millimeter stainless steel tube here and that is sitting on here and on this block now one thing to make this thing to rotate much easier but I would like to use some, something like this which is 20 teeth and the problem is that as you can see it is sitting basically inside the leg which I have made there and I did not know that I will need this at the time so that's why I had to cut there some holes and also here but as you can see it wouldn't fit there very much so what I can do is make me maybe maybe 8 teeth sprocket here and 16 here which will be maybe a little bit more achievable I'll have to enlarge this hole which would be fine and mainly move this move this threaded rod to the center which is a little bit problematic because this threaded rod is basically it is connected directly to the to the pulley of this conveyor I can move that but I will have to move basically this whole beam that is that it is sitting on forward so that the threaded rod is center but also I will have to move uh, I will have to move this thing a little bit forward which I can because otherwise the range of movement is quite exact actually now I did not anticipate this 
problem really and fortunately I had some pulleys laying around and some timing belt only thing I had to buy is really these elastic ropes and this chain otherwise I had everything by hand that I needed so I was able to make this work basically and the thing is that I will use this probably at like 45 degrees or 30 like three times a year so mostly it will stay aligned vertically or horizontally again frame of reference also maybe I could mention one thing that as you can see this thing is protruding a little bit so that's why I have to cut these these things so when I close this thing it will basically not collide and yeah you can see that this thing is pretty much fine now also I did not think about the guides for example because normally people use system that that they have a basically L-shaped thing that supports the guide itself and it is only it is only locked on the front the the third side is not locked at all and it is free to move and it is basically rel relying on the rigidity itself which I don't really like and I have locking mechanism like this here so basically you lock this and it doesn't move it's really you okay it can move. but you have to really press on it but yeah again I'm not sure if I will use this long term or make more conventional guide probably now another thing that I could mention is that I have glued these two plywood boards together to provide better rigidity and thickness needed because as I said I have cal calibrated this the center of rotation to be 24 millimeters about this edge so that's why I have this 24 millimeters above the edge but the little problem is which I could have seen come in and I did actually Oops. okay I can see why the traditional style guide are better so there is yeah it's very hard to see but this board isn't perfectly flat maybe I can show you this way see it's not flat at all so that sucks so the thing is that when I'm cutting fingers I'm doing it like so and even with some jig the depth of cut will be still same because the jig will be the same so that's not really a problem and when I'm cutting like groove like so for some thin plywood drawer bottoms or something like that you won't you don't really want it to be undersized not sure I mean at such length you will be you will have problem with wood with wood being being bent on itself so you will have to keep that in mind somehow so not sure not sure not sure really like there may be some other stuff that I would like to do for example I don't know how heavy this saw is but it is very very heavy so I may be Right now it is sitting or on some like basic beach legs and I may need to move this move this to this cavity down there so that I would like to do I don't know how I would like to do that. Maybe I would like to have some wheels on here or something that like I will press on some lever and I can move this easily forwards and backwards because it is big anyway so that's probably all that I have to say about this saw I did use it already I mean mainly for cutting like garbage so it fits into the bin <laughs> but uh, I did cut some wood on this saw and um, 10 out of 10 would do it again basically compare that to the old contractor saw holy shit this thing is a quiet it is precise and it is it's just it's just perfect really 
and best thing is that I saved probably five thousand dollars or more so yeah very good